Hey folks, Pastor Josh here, and we are going to continue our study in Galatians. Now, uh, we are now in chapter 5 of Galatians. We've gone through 1, 2, 3, 4, and we are now in chapter 5, and we have one more chapter after chapter 5. But chapter 6 is our last chapter, and it's not these last two chapters are not very long, so they won't uh, take up a lot of video time, but this is good stuff. This is good stuff. Understand that the Galatians, Paul had, Paul had on a missionary journey, started the Galatian church. Uh, they were on fire. They were doing good things. They were, they were learning of God and all those good things. <laughs> In walks the Judaizers. The Judaizers uh, were Jewish people who I believe uh, was very intentional about what they what they were going to do and what they were going to do was they walked in they were going to turn try to try to turn the people away from God and put them back on the path of the law now they were very intentional about it they they walked in they said hey you know uh, it's great that you guys are Christians it's great that you are but we need you now that you you're a Christian, maybe you're maybe you're still Jewish, but you're a Christian. That that's fine, but you have to still follow the law. And maybe you're not Jewish, maybe you're Gentile, but you're a Christian, so you have to identify not only with the Christian faith, but you have to identify with the Jewish faith because Jesus came from Jews, right? So, so all of this confusion going on, they were very intentional about it. So much so, this confusion was going on so much so, and they were having such an effect on the Galatian church. That Paul heard about it. Paul heard about it on his missionary journey. He heard about what was going on. So he writes this letter. He writes this letter to them. And he's very, very uh, pointed. You can tell in his, ten, his tone and his tense of words. He's, as he's writing it, he's getting more and more upset. You can tell, uh, you can tell that he... And, and also he's getting upset, but also he, you, can, you, you, you can feel his desire... And his love for them still, and his desire for them to come back to God, and so it is. A, it's a really good book to really look at and to really check ourselves where we are and how much we uh, put ourselves into this mold of religion versus a mold of relationship with God and following God and following Jesus. Okay, and and that's basically what was happening here. They were they were free from the law, free from the bondage of the law, as Paul talks about a lot here in Galatians. They were free from it, but then they took back the bondage. And so Paul had to then come to them, and he had to then understand the, and, and try to get them to understand that they were, they were actually falling away. They were actually turning away from their relationship. They weren't enhancing their relationship. They were turning away from it. So turn with me, if you're not there already, to chapter 5. We are in verse 2, and we're following down. And Paul, again, gets very pointed here. He gets very pointed on his, his, his wordings. Very harsh, very pointed. And you can tell he's, he's really trying to hammer this home. But they are not believers when they turn their, way, turn their back on it and follow the law. Verse 2, he says, Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, you will profit, Christ will profit you nothing. I testify again to every man who is circumcised that he is obligated to keep the whole law. You have been cut off from Christ. However, whoever, or say, whoever of you are justified by law, you have fallen from grace. See, see he's very pointed. If you're following this law, you, you, you've lost out. You've turned, you've turned your back, you've lost out. Okay? And so that is a good argument for someone who says, I got saved 20 years ago and I can live how I want to and I'm still going to heaven. No, 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 no. Right here, he's saying, you, you came out of this life. You came out of this life to be with you, to, to have a life with Christ. You came out of this life to have a life with Christ. Now you're back to your old life. You're losing out. You're not going to be. You're not going to be with God. You are. You are. Fallen from grace. 
So when somebody says to me, and, and, and I've had this said to me before, that um, I gave my heart to, to Jesus 20 years ago and I can live how I want, I'm still going to heaven. Uh, it's not supported. It's not that That is not a supported uh, doctrine in Scripture. That's not a supported precedent in Scripture. There is more precedent for the opposite. And here, this is one of the pa pa passages that supports that precedent that you are falling from grace and you will not you will not spend eternity with God if you turn your back on him even though you gave your heart to him 20 years ago or whatever it is that that is not the precedent the, the precedent is that once you turn once you turn to God and you turn about turn away and stay turned away then you're not going to be with God that's the precedent here okay now he's very pointed and he says you turned away you turned away you have fallen from grace. If you're going to follow this law, if you're going to follow this way, if you're going to go back to the way you once were, you've fallen from grace. You've fallen from grace. Verse 5, he says, For we, through the, through the Spirit of faith, through, through, through the Spirit by faith, eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything but faith which works through love. So, he's saying the law doesn't mean anything. Circumcision and uncircumcision doesn't matter. It's faith that works through love. God's love for us. God's love for us. We're harping on this whole whole thing about how... Uh, I'm, I'm harping on uh, the, the, this whole thing on how... The Old Testament law's purpose now is to bring us to the point of understanding we need a Savior, and it gives us the ability to then to then activate or have the faith to believe in the New Covenant or the New Testament, where it says where where we understand that Jesus we need to be born again. That's what he's saying here. Doesn't matter about the ritualistic laws. It matters about the relationship by faith through love. That's what matters. Now, it says, For we through the Spirit by faith eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness. So if we are believers, if we are if we are uh, loving one another, if we are, are following God, we eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness, for the hope of Jesus coming back. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything but faith which works through love. So faith that works through love. The, the, the way you came to faith, uh, understanding the, the Old Testament law had its purpose in working in you that, re that made you realize you were in bondage. And then coming to Jesus and getting born again through faith and love and hope and all those good things. He's saying that if you abandon that, if you abandon that way of thinking, then you are turning away. You are then, once again, you are then fallen from grace. So there is no precedent in Scripture, and I don't care, I don't care what anybody says. There's no precedent in Scripture that once saved, always saved. There's no precedent there. The precedent is exactly the opposite. You turn away from God you fall from grace. It doesn't matter what it doesn't matter who you are. You gave your life to Jesus twenty years ago, so you can live the way you want to live. Paul here tells the Galatians, you do that, you're falling from grace. That's the precedent here, not the precedent that God was okay with anybody that turned away and said, Okay, you can still come into my 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 presence. God never ever said that. And there's never a precedent for that. And Paul Concrete set in here with the Galatians that they they are they are turning away they're turning away falling from grace if they go back to the old way they were living if they go back to the the law quote unquote the law the sin they're falling from grace that's 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 not me that's not me saying that that's that's the scripture that's the scripture okay so that 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 begs for us today. We, we live our life in Jesus Christ, then we turn away from God and say, Oh, I'm all right, I gave my heart to Jesus 20 years ago. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're falling from grace. You have to deal with that. You have to deal with that. You have to understand that God 
want you to come back. But, in the same way, he's not going to accept you going to his promised land in eternity while you're still in your sin. He's not going to allow you to do that. You have to recommit yourself to God. You have to recommit yourself to his, his way of thinking. And you have to recommit yourself to the Word. Because there is a precedent here of those who turn away get left behind not the other way around so that being said verse 7 says you were running well who hindered you who hindered you from obeying the truth who was it it's the Judaizers Judaizers came in and said yeah okay you have to follow the law obviously they had a good impact because it was working so much so that Paul felt the need to write this letter. Okay? With this tone in it. With this tone of anger. With this tone of uh, feeling like he had no impact on whatsoever. Feeling that he was he was, he was, was very angry. Feelings of anger. Feelings of, of, of fear for them. Because it said that he was, he was afraid for them. If you look back up here in verse 9. He says, he says, or verse 10, you observe days and months and seasons and years, and I am afraid for you lest you have lest I have worked for you in vain. They were having an impact on the church of Galatia. They were having an impact there. So much so that Paul thought his work was in vain. So there was there was such a uh, such a thing going on here with that that Paul felt the need to write this letter with this tone and with this harshness about it to bring them back to Christ bring them back to what he was he was wanting to do now you were running well who hindered you with the truth from the truth the Judaizers we know that now he says this persuasion does not come from him who calls you so, God did not tell him this, this persuasion, this going back to the law, is not of God. Okay? So that begs the question to you and I. Going back to your old life is not of God. It's not of God. Now, let's go here. A little yeast leavens the whole batch. So a little bit of sin in our life will turn the whole thing big. Turn the whole, will just envelop the whole thing, envelop your whole life if you let it go. If you let it have an issue, it'll envelop your whole life. It'll envelop your whole life. Do you want that to happen? I don't want that to happen to you. It'll envelop your whole life. A little leaven, as the King James says, leaveneth the whole lump. Okay? This isn't King James, this is a uh, modern English version, but that's what the King James says. So a little bit of sin left alone will overtake you essentially and that's what he's telling them a little bit of sin will overtake you it'll overtake you so this little bit of sin that they have twinkled their, their sprinkled on their truth you know the Judaizers sprinkled this little bit of law uh, or, or truth in their eyes on, on the truth of God a little bit of sin being the law being of, of sin began to have a work and it began to just envelop the whole thing right so so they have so there he's trying to get them to understand that's it's not of God it's not of God now if you look at here um, we'll probably look at it next time but just the punctuation indicates what kind of tone this is about but uh, he says that a little bit of yeast leavens a whole batch. So that, that is our challenge, really, every single day, isn't it? That's our challenge. It is to, to guard ourselves against the sin that's there. Guard ourselves against the, the, the world that would throw these things at us. Because we're always, you know, television, internet, uh, whatever, email, texting, whatever. Sin, right? stuff throw at us what do we do with it we have to go to God with it don't we we have to ask God to help us after God 
to move in us so that it doesn't have an effect like it had on the Galatians. Okay? So allow God to do that for you. Allow God to do that for you. So, until next time, this is Pastor Josh. God bless.